Hey everyone. So I am here today to have a casual conversation, a casual chat about this book, The Oracle Creator by Stephen Bright, published by Liminal 11. So this is not really a review or like a full flip through, though I will briefly show you some pages in the book. I will link a video of Stephen Bright himself doing a more detailed flip through, as well as an interview where he is discussing the book. So do check those videos out. They're informative. They're great. This is just my wanting to talk about how much I've been fangirling over this book. And y'all, people are not coming at me with free decks and books to review. So rest assured, I bought this book with my own money. <laughs> Unless I state otherwise, what you see in these videos is what I've purchased or have been gifted from friends and, and family. So this book just really speaks to my creative soul. And it's a wealth of knowledge and it's a fantastic resource for anyone wanting to create a deck, you know, tarot deck, oracle deck, both are covered in this book. This book does a great job in guiding you through the process of deck creating from being really clear about your intentions for the deck and planning and then uh, going through the actual design process and providing great tips on that. You know, it covers uh, tips on writing a guidebook if you choose. And then there is a discussion about the different, different publishing options, you know, like the crowdfunding or self-publishing or uh, even pitching to a mass market publisher. Also, there are some great exercises. So this serves as a workbook too. So for instance, here, this is in the planning section where Stephen Bright poses some questions for you to think about for your deck. And it's to help you, again, be more mindful of your intentions for this deck to create a clear vision of what exactly it is that you, you want. Um, let's see here. And I mean, this is just beautifully, uh, beautifully produced and designed. Also, there are some great little reference guides within this larger guide. Here we have color meanings where he goes through different descriptions and keywords. Here we have a little reference on the more symbolic approach of different objects as examples. So it's just really well thought out. And one of my favorite aspects about this book is that Stephen Bright interviews different people who've had different reasons behind creating their decks and uh, who've executed different approaches and how they've designed and published their decks. So you get interviews with more well-known names like Caitlin Matthews or Deborah Koff Chapin. But then... Seriously, this is like the best here. When I got to this section on license-free photography and I turned the page, I was like, holy shit, that's, that's Duff Tarot from Instagram. This is, this is her deck. This is the duff matic That's so amazing. That's just such awesome shit right there. <laughs> anyway, so you're getting a gamut of different stories and experiences when it comes to deck creating. And especially, again, the intentions behind why these creators created the decks that they did, you know, whether it be to, you know, they were dealing with some difficult feelings or situations and creating their decks was a way to explore those feelings, to cope or to navigate. And then other people, you know, maybe they, they were in search of a specific kind of deck and they just could not find it in the marketplace. And then so they decided to go ahead and create one for them for themselves. 
Another thing that I just really appreciate about this book is that Stephen Bright is not an art snob. And that elitist art snobbery, you know, whether it be in writing or visual art or music, that just, that just really chaps my ass. You know, why do people got to piss on someone's artistic parade, you know, with their angry and judgmental pee? It just, I, I, I don't get it. Anyway, let's, let's keep this positive. This book is saying to its readers that it's all good. Whether you are drawing or collaging, you know, using photography, it's all valid and you don't have to pour tons of money into creating your deck. You know, if you want to buy some blank cards and uh, put some stickers on there and create a scene with stickers and then mod podge it, then that's all good and you're golden. You know, you don't have to invest a lot of expensive materials and resources to create your deck. Uh, so, so I think that two takeaways from this book are that one, whatever you're creating, whatever deck that you are making, it should be one that you love and would personally use. And two, it should be fun. And you know, if you've been on my channel, that that is something that I reiterate a lot, that you should be having fun with your creations. You know, it shouldn't feel like a burden. It shouldn't feel like, it shouldn't feel like a chore. So to conclude this part of the video, I highly recommend this book. I think Stephen Bright nailed it with the content. And I think that Liminal 11 nailed it with the kind of production quality. It, it really is a nice book to have in your library. So of course, as I was reading this book, I couldn't help but think of some of the decks that I have from fellow TerraTube villagers. And I thought it would be nice to kind of quickly show you some of these decks so that you get different flavors of, you know, the different types of inspiration that these creators had and how they executed their decks. And most importantly, you can, or at least in my opinion, I can see the effort that really went into their creating these decks. It was very clear that they created something that they loved and that they were going to use personally. And it wasn't just about, it wasn't just about, oh, I want to publish a deck just so that I can flex and say that I published a deck. Oftentimes that, that strategy, if that's the main intention, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, having publishing goals and having that be part of your aspirations. But for that to be a main driver, for creating something like this, I, I I don't know how well that often turns out. And with some of these decks, they weren't even intended to be published. I do think that this is something else that is conveyed in the Oracle Creator book, which is that there are great tips for if you decide that you would like to try publishing. And again, when you read the interviews, when you read through the book, you get the sense that that was not the main goal of any of these creators. The first deck that I'm going to show is from Julianne Victoria, and it is called the Scrying Poetry Tarot. And this is a mini version that I think is available on both Great Game Crafter and Make Playing Cards. And then she has a larger version. But uh, what's great about this deck, well, first of all, 
this is a nice tuck box. I know a lot of people have quote unquote tuck box rage, but this is how you do a nice tuck box, just FYI. So I got this on Game Crafter. Um, but anyway, okay, so what's great about this and a little different is that this is a text based deck and she used poetry. So the majors were uh, written with haiku and the minors um, freeform and then the courts are limericks. And the, the background imagery, she used kind of like vintage prints, but then for the courts, these are from her grandmother's watercolor paintings from the 70s, which is really cool. If you want a full walkthrough of this deck, I will provide a link, but it's just really creative. And an idea for if you say don't want to write a guidebook, but you want to include some information, and I think this is really smart, what uh, Julia and Victoria did is that she just wrote the information formatted as additional cards. So that's one thing you could do. This next deck is also a text-based deck, and this is by Veronica Jude. It doesn't have an official name, uh, but we've been calling it the Veronica Jude deck, the Don't Panic Tarot, because you can see that phrase lightly here on the backs. This is a linen cardstock pocket edition or mini from Make Plain Cards, but she has different sizes and different types of cardstock options that you can choose from. Once again, I will leave all the links where I can, but she curated different quotes to make her tarot deck. And for this being a mini, this actually riffle shuffles beautifully. So I do have a full walkthrough of the deck and um, because this, this deck doesn't have the titles, that, that video also contains, I think in the description or it's pinned in the notes, um, what titles correspond with each of these quotes. This next deck is the Tarot of Passing Showers by Valerie Chia. This is a nice linen cardstock and this art was all original work drawn by Valerie herself. Some of the images were part of an Inktober Instagram challenge, an art or drawing challenge. And this deck is uh, more heavily Thoth inspired and some RWS too, but I think Thoth is one of Valerie's ride or die decks. So since I have been starting to learn the Thoth, it's been nice to make some of these more concrete connections to the Thoth references in her deck. But I, I just love the art, it, the, the sketch-like quality, I love the color palette, I love the, the manga style, uh, I love how gritty it can be. I really just appreciate how she's reimagined each of these cards and the archetypes. I can't remember if I mentioned this previously, but Valerie Chia's YouTube channel is called The Slightly Chipped Moon, and it's the same handle for her Instagram.
This next tarot deck is the Zany Spirit Tarot from Zane Hughes over at Tarot Token Witchery. And Zane came onto my channel semi-recently to have a casual conversation with me about this deck and about his deck creating process. And his process is very similar to mine in that he uses the app called Canva. And he has some great videos where he actually shows you, uh, you know, the process of where he's creating an actual card. If you're interested in that, check out his channel. But so he uses Canva and he takes different images from the Canva repository and they're license free. And then he assembles all the imagery and manipulates all of the elements to create a final scene for the card. So he takes different pieces and he's, you know, just manipulating and filtering and amending to create exactly the scene that he wants. And I think he did a fabulous job. Now this deck does not come with a guidebook, but Zane does have a full walkthrough on his channel where he explains the intentions behind, behind his choices for each card, you know, why he designed each card the way he did. And he talks a little bit about that as well in our casual convo live, but you'll get the, the full breadth of it if you go and watch his walkthrough. One of my favorite cards, another favorite, just really creative and beautifully done. I'm now going to quickly follow up with one of my decks because, like I said, my creation process is, is very similar to Zane's. So this is my Cup of Contemplation cards. And this was the very first MPC deck that I created. And this is a, a prompt-based deck for reflection, you know, journaling, or if you want to use this to then um, do a tarot reading. But I was, I created this first and foremost for myself. And I think I could, I mean, not to speak for anyone, but I think that is the case for all of the decks that I'm showing you here, that we created, we created our decks for ourselves. And publishing a deck was not the main hardcore goal. And so I, this was a deck that I just wasn't seeing out there in the marketplace. I mean, certainly prompt based decks definitely exist, but not, they didn't exactly hit the mark for me. And so that's why I decided to go ahead and create my own. They are large and I intentionally made them that way so that I could again this was <laughs> this was made for me so I wanted a deck that was large enough that I could place the card on my sacred space or wherever and it was large enough for me to see and read as a reminder for myself as I might you know when I would walk by or at a distance that I could still see the card I will say, though, that it still riffle shuffles and bridges, and I have small hands, so if I can do it, then chances are you can also do it. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> but this was just such a, a fun experience for me. One thing I will say that is that if you plan on making a deck that you want a, a print-on-demand copy for, for yourself. And this was mentioned briefly in the book, but you'll want to make sure that you have the right specs before you start actually designing your deck. So print-on-demand companies like Make Playing Cards and, I don't know, Game Crafter, they have specific um, dimensions and measurements for your imagery. 
So you'll just want to make sure that when you begin to design your deck, that you keep those specs in mind so that when it comes time to then upload to these, to their templates, then, you know, nothing is inadvertently cut off or the, it, it's not formatted quite the way you wanted uh, because, you know, the design was a little bit off from what's compatible with the specs of that company. So just a little tip, but in any case, um, I also created this on Canva and I used pre-existing license-free images or I, I purchased images. If I couldn't quite find what I was looking for, I purchased some of these images. And then, you know, like Zane, I went ahead and manipulated the different elements to design the the, the full comprehensive image that I wanted for each card. So it's just so much fun to do. And I appreciate all of you who have purchased this deck and shown your love and support for this deck. That, that really, truly means a lot to me. The last two decks that I'm going to show are Oracle decks. This one is She of Insight Oracle, and this is by Renee Holland Chang, aka Meadowlark Mystic on YouTube. And this deck wasn't even meant to be a deck. Renee received these very powerful downloads visitations, if you will, of these sacred feminine guides and felt compelled to create art that represented these guides and their messages. And so Renee decided to use collage as her medium. And they are just such beautiful pieces. Let me look at that one. Crone, She of Truth. And I actually bought a plaque from her. Uh, where is it? It's called Dove, She of the Silver Compassion, which of course I'm not going to be able to find. Here. She of the Silver Compassion. So I have a little plaque of that. But again, this was not meant to be a deck. Renee was just creating art. But several people were like, bitch, you need to make this into a deck. Just kidding. We were not that aggressive. But I, I think we were mm, tenacious enough with our... <laughs> requests are pleading for her to make this into a deck that she very kindly obliged us. And I think it turned out beautifully. And Renee also did create a guidebook. I bought this on Amazon. So I, th I think this is a an Amazon print-on-demand product. I, I'm not sure, but it's beautiful. Beautifully designed and organized. So that's an option for if you would like to create a guidebook, you could use Again, a print-on-demand service like Amazon or like Lulu. I know there are different companies out there. So, She of Insight Oracle, a deck that was never meant to be a deck, but we are so happy that it is now. This last deck is called The Magic and Medicine of Plants Oracle by Mixtress Ray. And she kindly gifted me this copy because I helped her a little bit with the formatting. But these backs are her own photography. This is her photo that she took and that she manipulated the coloring 
for. And uh, this deck is one that she had never intended to publish. This was just her own project for herself where she took a tarot deck that she no longer wanted to use for tarot and she cut out illustrations of the different plants and flowers from the Reader's Digest book, I believe by the same title, uh, Magic and Medicine of Plants. I actually have a used copy of that that I bought because I wanted to uh, use that as a guidebook, so to speak, for this deck. So she, she cut out the different images and then she glued them onto the cards and then she ran them through a typewriter to create the text, which I believe is also inspired or taken from the Reader's Digest reference book. And that was that. That was her initial intention. And then when she showed it on her channel, people were interested in receiving a copy and so she made it available on Make Playing Cards. And so this is just an example. I know she won't mind me saying because she's mentioned it herself during her flip through of this deck. But because she hadn't intended to publish this deck, I mean, yeah, she just, she wasn't worried about specs. She wasn't worried about dimensions. And then so when it came time to upload to MPC, it just wasn't working out. And so we remedied that by creating borders around the imagery so that nothing was, uh, nothing important was lost. And I think it turned out great. Oops, I lied. I have one more to show you. This is a Lenormand deck, and this is the Rested Lenormand by our very own Don Michelle over at Boho Tarot. And this is one of my favorite Lenormands. She used pre-existing photography, stock imagery, to create a deck that she said was merely for her own personal use. This was a way for her to become better familiar with the Lenormand system, and definitely what better way to do that than to create your own deck. So I think she did a fabulous job. I have gushed on about this deck before, so I'll, <laughs> I'll save you, I'll save you all that repetition, but um, it's, it's really, really nicely done. So here's an example where you can use existing photography images. You can, you can take photographs yourself and create a deck that's really lovely and that's really functional and usable and works. I hope you enjoyed this video. I just really appreciate people who put themselves out there with their art. I know that's like a hard and scary thing to do sometimes, but your vision is valid. And so I hope that the Oracle Creator book and some of the examples that I've shown you of decks from our very own tarot tubers will inspire you to take the chance to create an oracle or tarot deck of your own if that is what you really want to do and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks if it is a deck that you love and that you will use it deserves to be created until the next video much love and take care